I get it. There's not enough hours in the day. I know, as we're working towards the major release of PowerShell 7 for each of the projects that I have and for each of those tasks in those projects, well, they take a long time. I just can't get them all done at once. I know I say I'm a multitasking kind of guy, but at the end of the day, I'm a single threaded dude and I just don't have it at my single core to get more work done. If only there were two of me. Because two is always better than one. Well, not so much with guitars, but at least with PowerShell. Yes, PowerShell has had parallelism since V2 with remoting and background jobs. But if you were somebody that worked with workflow like I did, you saw some other ways to use parallelism with for each that was amazing. Well, now for each dash object has that built in and it's going to be in PowerShell 7. So let's take a look. So while this is a quick introduction to using the new feature of for each object, I'm going to give you some documentation as well. Now you can see that I'm on a Mac right now and I have uh, the current release of PowerShell 7, which is the release candidate. I'm going to clear the screen and let's start out with a range operator. Now a range operator simply counts from one number to the next. And what I want to do is I kind of want to review something with you. I'm going to pipe this to for each object. And this is how you would normally see it utilized when you see it on the inner tubes or whatever. I'm going to put in the squiggly braces and whatever I put inside of this squiggly braces is going to execute each time one of those numbers is counted. So basically five times I'm going to get something. What do I want? I'm going to put dollar sign underscore and this means I'm going to get the current object coming across the pipeline which will get displayed which will again be those numbers. Now the reason that I just showed this to you was because we're missing something here in front of this squiggly brace. What we're missing is is the parameter that goes here. Normally there's a parameter and because you're not accustomed to seeing it most of the time, the new feature can sometimes get hidden. The parameter that goes in front of that code block is called dash process. And when you run that, you get exactly what we have been getting, what you expect. The new feature to have for each object do parallelism is to switch dash process to parallel. Don't try to add it to the end. That's not what the goal is. It won't work that way. And that's what a lot of people initially started trying. So it's parallel. And now you have the new feature and the new feature will now kick in and work. In other words, for each object will now run in parallel. Now you're not seeing a visual difference between dash process and dash parallel now. And that's because I want to give you a little bit of a warning. So look, parallelism isn't the silver bullet in a world of werewolves. In other words, it's not going to solve all of your performance problems. In fact, you might be surprised to see that it incurs some performance problems. See, when you start up parallelism with a for each object, that means that we're going to have to start new run spaces for PowerShell. That means more memory, more processing. In other words, the setup costs us resources. Well, if you're just doing like a DIR of your root drive, you're not going to need all of this parallelism startup in order to get the results that you want. So sometimes as you're testing this, be kind of mindful of what you're testing it against. Uh, let me give you another analogy. It's kind of like mowing the lawn. If you only need a shot glass worth of grass, why would you fire up a lawn mower with gasoline and all that stuff when you can just use a pair of scissors? So when you use the parallelism switch, if you're on a VM with only a single core, well, you're probably not going to get the results that you want. If you're doing something very light on the file system, you're not going to get the results that you want. Tell you what, though, let me give you a couple of demonstrations, both on Linux and on Windows, where this might be a little bit more realistic for you. So now I have VS Code up, and rather than try to hand type all of this in, here's what I'd like to do is show you an example of something where parallelism does pay off, and that's when you're doing local large file moves. And in this case, I'm going to copy a bunch of VMs. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start this and then I'll explain what I'm doing in the code. Let me go ahead and press F8 and get this loaded. And I'm going to go down here and clear the screen and start this function, which I just called test copy. So it'll start running. Now let's take a look at the code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use measure command so that we get some time how long it took at the end of this. 
So inside of measure command expression, I've got my range operator. I'm going to do this five times, and I've got a for each. And instead of process, I've got parallel. Now, what am I doing? I'm going to create some folders, actually five folders, because I've used dollar sign underscore in the name of the folder. And I'm going to copy a bunch of virtual machines from one location to those five different locations in this case. Now, I'm actually copying about six or seven virtual machines. Um, so that's a pretty good large file copy. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind, these are uh, virtual machines that are on my local system and I'm moving them around on my local laptop. So performance, yes, I'm gonna get some pretty good performance out of it, but your performance mileage will vary, of course. So when this completes, I should get a time down here of how long it took, oh, it just popped up. So about 58 seconds to move all of those large files. I need to tell you that in uh, tests that I've done where I've run this with dash process up here, it's taken over a few minutes. So it like, like three minutes right around that time. So is this a huge difference, three minutes to one minute? In this case, well, if I extrapolated that out and had bigger volume sizes, things like that, yeah, this would be a pretty big difference. Now, there's another demonstration I want to show you of another reason that you could use parallelism to get some effective results. But for that, let's switch to Windows. Swoop, making my own sound effects. Hey, by the way, before I show you this other demo, have you seen the new terminal for Windows in PowerShell inside of the new terminal? Yeah, that's pretty awesome, but that's not why I'm here. Anyways, so let me bring up VS Code on Windows. And in this example, let me show you what I've got going here. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and, and co not copy it, but go ahead and select this and, whoa, out of control. Okay, so it's a little out of control. Anyways, there we go. And I'll press F8. So let me show you what I'm doing here as I get this guy started. Again, we're going to do pretty much the same thing, only in this case, another great example of when to use uh, uh, the parallelism on for each might also be when you're doing some log um, analysis. In this case, I'm looking at, well, my local Windows logs, and I've got several of the logs selected up here, and I'm going to splat this log list in just a second. So if you take a look, I've got uh, the system applications, some PowerShell logs. And again, I'm going to use the same structure I did before. I'm going to measure this so you get an idea of the time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these logs and I'm going to use for each parallel. And I'm going to use get when event so I can go through and look at each of those logs. And you'll notice I'm doing a where object here. I wanted to find logs that um, some of the logs that had errors or that had shown where something was downloaded. So I decided to grab those. So I'm actually analyzing some logs in a useful way. I'll sort through them, select them, and then add them to a file down here at the bottom. So I've broken it all out for you so you can take a look at it. Now, usually log analysis can take a long time to go through these logs. In this case, if you look down here, I got lucky and it finished in about 23 seconds. Oh, look, nice little firewall warning. Um, so it got finished in about 23 seconds. That's because I didn't have the system log in here, which would have taken me, oh, probably about 10 minutes. Now, if I'd had this as process instead of parallel, yeah, it takes considerably a lot longer to go through all those logs and weed through this stuff. So yeah, this is a good example of another good use case for this. So at the end of the day, is the new feature of using parallel going to be beneficial to you? Well, those of us that have been using it for a long time with workflow certainly found it out to be. And in the right cases, it will be helpful. One last thing I wanna show you while I'm here, is let me go ahead and bring up my browser and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that you can see what I'm going for and oh I have it up it's all ready to go here it is um, on the PowerShell team blog Paul has written an excellent article on for each parallel the feature how to use it just as I've shown you some some use examples for it that that you can go through and work with he also goes through and spends a little bit of time of explaining how it works and some of the features to this. Some of the things that I haven't talked about in this quick intro, like the fact that you can set a throttle limit and that you can have for each um, parallel as background jobs. Also, some of the things you would take a look at is when it should be used and when things might not work out the way that you want. You'll have to experiment to get an idea. Along with this, 
And over the next several months, as we're going through the release of PowerShell 7, this is going to be a big deal. We'll have more documentation for you. There's going to be blogs, both from the PowerShell team and the community starting up. And of course, we're going to have more training from our partners and from us. We'll do some as well so that you can get more in-depth with these features and this, along with all the other new features that I'm going to be talking about in future episodes of the show. So... Thanks a lot and look forward to seeing you next time.